Hello, hello, everyone. In case you, you don't know me, I'm Alina Smolansky, and I'm a certified instructor of Neurographica. In addition, I'm also an artist, and I've been an artist for a long time, like 12, 12 feet, over 12 years, 13 years. And before that, I was an engineer uh, in professional communications, an architect, you know, and a, in addition to that, I'm very interested in spiritual development. And most of that's how I came into art. And I hope that creating art will help me on this path. And also on this specific day, we have uh, talking about today, we have three significant ideas that we can explore. The first, of course, it's winter solstice celebration that has been celebrated throughout centuries from many nationalities countries all around the world because it's one of the most significant time for the earth for in inhabitants of the earth when the sun starts shining again i i mean like in some areas it's probably not it was disappeared and that what's celebrated and so the death simultaneously it's the lowest point the darkest night and then automatically as soon as it hits the lowest point is also the birth so the the birth of the sun and it's a because it's a cyclical event we celebrate it every year another one is also uh, the date if you think on the calendar specifically on this day in 12 21 21 the Sumeru date, and it has a number, if you're familiar with numerology, it's also significant. And also because it's so close to Christmas, and the Christmas is probably was based on this specific uh, time of the, uh, it's so close because it used to be a pagan holiday. So when Christianity came over, they tried to put those two dates, significant dates close together. So that's one of the ideas why Christmas is celebrated close to New Year and close to winter solstice. So the first thing that I mentioned about winter solstice, it's a, such a significant day. And also when I, uh, last year, if somebody who watched my last year presentation about this winter, this event, I used the spiral. The spiral is going into the center and coming out, it's a spiral of development. Uh, this year, I decided to use a similar idea, which is the labyrinth. The labyrinth, it's even a little bit deeper, it's significance more, it's going, again, we're going in through the center, to the darkest, to the lowest point within ourselves. There is a come explanation why labyrinths are so used as um, tools for spiritual development also, again, all the other many nations and the first labyrinth was known like about five, 4,000 years ago. So labyrinths are found throughout the world at different places, different locations, and different, different people. As a solstice, this is the darkest, the longest night, the shortest day. When the sun hits its point, the lowest point, this is the northern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere will be the opposite. So please come to, so and I assume that everybody who joins me were in the northern hemisphere. So we're going deep within with the help of the labyrinth to the center and then we're coming out again. It's like symbolic for the sun going into the lowest point and coming out towards the sun, towards new development and new year. And if we can repeat it New Year again. If anybody is watching it in any other day, any other time, no problem. Because every day you can go use this tool of the labyrinth, go deep within yourself, concentrate and come out and enjoy ideas and insight that you experience being within the labyrinth, with the central point. But just today it's because it's more a powerful a day and because of this date like 12 21 21 or if you in europe 
there will be like 21, 12, 21. It's a very significant day. That's good for setting your intentions. And in general, on a day like this, if you were setting intention for next year, please be attentive to yourself and the entire day focus and observe your thoughts. So they can, your thoughts, your emotions can serve you well and a positive, create positive changes in the new coming year. So, and I think with this, I will switch to my drawing camera and I will explain a little bit, a little bit more. Okay, here we are, we have a little bit of, uh, as you can see, my, so that everything is set for celebrating this very specific day. And I will also explain why the cones and evergreens are so good to have a, with the tradition of using evergreens and pine cones around this day. Okay, so for today, so, oops, a little bit more, just so we'll use it later. So for today, what we'll need, so we will be drawing with a pencil, the labyrinth itself, charts la labyrinth. We will also use markers. If you have, you can use a compass for drawing concentric circles. But if, if not, if you don't have, and uh, the majority of us do not have it, because this is, I will show how to use just simple paper and we can draw circles at the same time. So, so about the labyrinth, one of my videos, and I explained it was a year ago, and I can provide you a link. It's available for free on my YouTube channel. I explained about the labyrinth. There are two types, main two types of labyrinth. First of all, let's uh, make sure that we understand there's a difference between the maze and labyrinth. The maze is like a puzzle with blind alleys, with uh, cul-de-sacs, with dead ends, the labyrinth has no, no confusion and has one entrance and one exit. So in an ancient set in stone. And there are a few kinds of libraries, like four types available. The more popular ones are the Cretan labyrinth. It's like a seven circuit that, uh, again, I explained how to draw and how to use it with neurographic line a year ago. And I, at that time, I promised to draw Chartres Cathedral type labyrinths that we're going to draw today, this one. The one is in the cathedral itself. The cathedral is in France and was built in the 12th century, 1205. And that's the most known labyrinth of this type in the world. And it has a lot of significant and people who attended, they found that there was so much energy in that area when you get in. We will draw this type of labyrinth, but I also, for simplicity, we will draw it simpler, like a seventh circuit. Not here is this 11, 11 is also number. By the way, when I mentioned about 11 in numerology, a very important number. And today's date, if you add all these dates, like one, two, like dates, 12, 21, 20, 21, then they all add up for 11, which is the number of uniqueness, intuition, abilities. So let's use the power of this date and set our intentions right. From the very beginning, before I forget, I hope you everybody thought about intentions, what we're going to draw today. And while we're explaining and getting ready, you may think about your intentions. The power of the labyrinths, labyrinths are used for quieting the mind and they believe to work well for synchronized the right and the left hemispheres. In this state, the mind becomes more like, like a super mind. And in this state, it's easy to access the subconscious mind. 
it's, similar, it's very similar to state of meditation. Unfortunately, not everyone has a labyrinth available to walk. So we will draw it today. We will experience this almost like building it, but also we will be able to draw it, to draw and to use it once it's done over and over again and use it like a finger labyrinth or pencil labyrinth and just you can use a pencil and trace the outline, the path again and again. So many, many times as you need and also draw uh, colors. And before going anywhere further, I would like to explain a few, a little bit about Neurographica. Uh, probably we have a uh, new people who join us who do not know about Neurographica, but even those who know it will be a nice <coughs> refreshment. So I will use just two pencils, similar to Christmas, a green and red. So it's Neurographica is a method that was developed by Russian psychologist Pavel Piskarev. He's a Dr. Pavel Piskarev, PhD. The method is fairly young, is known for 2014, mostly was very popular with uh, Russian speaking because it's originated, the founder is a uh, Russian from Russia. And now the last year it's becoming more and more popular in uh, English speaking countries and specifically in North America. The method is based, Neurographica, it's like a trademark, it's like a term and it's copyrighted. It uses a few elements that are very important. The, the basic one, the most important one is the neurographic line. By definition, the, the neurographic line is the line that doesn't repeat itself and we draw it where we don't know, we do not expect where to draw. What it means, it doesn't repeat itself, that every portion is not equal to the other one. They may resemble each other, but they are not the same. And what it means when we do not expect it, it like for example, if we have a line, straight line, we live in the world of straight lines and everything definite. We know that it follows from A to B. But if we use the new rules of Neurographica, the method of Neurographica to draw the line, we, will, we can extend it in the same direction, the required direction, like a vector. But the path of it, it's not known. As we are following the movement of the hand. So it's not a spontaneous line. It's not intuitive lines that, that we use. Sometimes it's used to describe neurographic, the neurographic line, but it's a consciously effort. You need to make a conscious effort to draw the line that doesn't repeat itself. The mind used control. It wants to know what happens next. So if we let the hand draw spontaneously, just use whatever we're drawing, it will continue, it eventually fall into the pattern. Like for example, like this. And we, it will continue, continue drawing it. And in this way, reinforcing what we what we already know. So with the neurographic line, it helps us to restructure, as you say, like a, our brain, a neural pathways, and help us build new habits or lessen and eliminate old ones. It's a direct access for the, to the, our subconscious mind. Of course, I explain much more about this and how it works and why it works in my courses, like uh, the basic use of Neurographica. But the beginning is just uh, enough for you to, to draw and to understand why we're drawing the Neurographic line. Uh, the second and most important uh, and very characteristic and very noticeable in the neuro 
Neurographica is the principle of rounding. So for example, I have a line and there is another line. And here it creates intersection. An intersection is formed by two lines and you, you can see it has a sharp point. And we do something like we draw arc and make it nice and smooth. Okay. So this is not neurographic line. The straight line is not neurographic line and pattern, any pattern is not neurographic line. So again, here's the line. And this is the second line intersecting and uh, creating intersection. There are two reasons why we we're doing this rounding that I showed here. One is, is to show that the two lines connect, intersect. We're drawing in two-dimensional space. But our re reality is three-dimensional. So if we can see lines, like for example, like this, we do not know. They appear as if they're intersecting on the two-dimensional plane, but in reality, they are not. And to show this connection, we make, we use the principle of rounding. The other one is probably more important is to deal with the figures with the circles and triangles. A neurographica uses is a, a four elements. It's an alphabet of neurographica and it's abstract form of art. That is, the first one is a neurographic line. And but we also use four figures. It's the circle, triangle and square. Okay, let's forget about the square for now, it's just so you know. But first of all, let's have a look at a circle. And circle is very important today because we will be drawing a lot of circles. Here's the labyrinth and it's based on circle. We have very positive association with a circle. The circle is the sun, it's the moon. The circle was used from ancient time as a significance of something holy. Like if you think about saints, they have halos around their head. The circle was also the figure of infinity. There is no beginning, no end. It's a perfect, it's symmetrical. perfect symmetry. No beginning, no end. That's why this is a symbol of infinity. It's oneness. Oneness and everything is included within it. Timelessness. Beauty. Perfection. So everything positive as a soul in the human mind became associated with a circle. And also from some material point of view, if we look in a circle, it's not threatening. We cannot uh, damage ourselves when we look on something around. There are no sharp corners. And now it's about sharp corners. Let's look at uh, the triangle. Triangle is also a powerful figure. It's a figure, if you think about it, it's a sign of ascension. In some cultures, like a strength. But, um, but on the other hand, it represents, in a way, the way it looks, those corners represent something disturbing for us. The corner, a sharpness. And from very early times, from at the same time when, when people began to associate the circle with something positive, the sharpness could represent danger. That's 
a sharp rocks, thorns, wild animals with fangs and claws, and later all these weapons. It's everything is about a sharpness. Arrow, sharpness. So if you, for example, if you see a broken mirror or bro bro broken glass, it shatters in the many like a triangular pieces and instinctively we would stay away from that because it represents danger even if it's far away from us from knife if you see a knife lying uh, on the counter in the kitchen a simple kitchen knife and pointing towards you it doesn't feel positive you know if anybody who cooked vegetables cut vegetables you know there's association with a knife pointing towards you. So to change the impression, a neurograph, in the neurographic of a person, we deal with a changing impression. We do not change life around us. In neurographica, we change our impression. So to change our impression, that's why we use the principle of rounding. Again, we have the line, like a little bit larger. So everybody can see well. Here are the lines. Here's another one. Intersecting. And automatically intersection forms four corners. And what we do, we round it and change our own hands and our own eyes. Uh, see how we change the sharpness impression into something positive. So that's the idea of rounding. And because the mind likes completing, see complete picture, automatically it sees, oh, here's probably a circle. This is a friendly connection. Here's another one. We round it and there's another circle. Of course, we do not need to draw this circle, but that's something that explains the positive effect of rounding. And many who draw neurographica on this step, when we start round, the corners intersection, everyone reports a change of our mood and attitude and a sense of calmness and positive. It's, it's very easy to achieve this effect just by rounding corners. If you, if you don't believe me, you can try yourself on your free time. And I, if there are certain things I may be doubtful but this one I experienced truly myself. When drawing the lines and start rounding them, it automatically, after a few minutes, or maybe longer, depending on your affliction, will bring a feeling of calm and positive, like nice and round effect. So that's that's about a neurographica for those who are not familiar with it. There's another one also I'd like to mention. It's important in a neurographic drawing on neuro art, all the elements in our pictures are connected, connected with the line. So the line serves not only as an element of that creates objects and an object of drawing element itself, but also it's for tying objects together, connecting. The idea of consciousness, the consciousness that all the lines of consciousness, so-called expressed as lines, connect all the elements. So there are no, there is nothing in the universe separate. So this idea of neurographic. So everything is connected. And our drawing represents our life. Okay. So this is about the introduction into neurographica. If there are any questions before we start drawing our labyrinths, the drawing of today. So for, uh, we'll begin to draw the labyrinths. I'd suggest using, first we will use a pencil, just simple pencil and an eraser. 
to draw a sketch and then we'll, we'll use a marker to draw it to draw a neurographic lines okay so there was a question why it was uh, the lines were they were connected why well just to so it's here when i thicken uh, to create a smooth transition so if i draw the line like this and like this and if i just do rounding that area will look very thick so and i create this transition and i take the line and i make it smoother this to blend in so that area it looks less uh, uh thick and also uh, if you notice that i draw more than one line sometimes it's necessary a double line or triple lines or more lines and it's also a style my style and i draw more than one line where it could be one line will do and many neurographic artists also do that because the way we function will try to reinforce and that the more lines we draw the better the stronger the effect so it's like you can see the neurographic drawings that any artist who practice neurographic keep on adding especially when they find marker uh, that's the lines so many lines form one line like a almost like a wire so now we're ready so the labyrinth that we're going to draw will start with the circles I would say the beginning, I find it approximately the center of your page. So I can use with a ruler. It's like a, when I'm architect, so <laughs> trained, so I, I like precision. You do not need to be precision, just find the center optically. So if, I, but if you draw two diagonals, you will find a, a center. Also, uh, with, you can use a pencil, but I have to use a marker because if I use a pencil, my lines will be too thin and you will not be able to see on the screen. So I will use, for this purpose, a marker. So this is like a center line. And this is my center. And I would like it to be, you know, I will leave the, some space. There are certain, of course, proportions about the labyrinth, but we will do simple. Work. So you have so it's the center. And I'm thinking the way when I calculated, I found out that to fit the labyrinth on one on the letter size or A4 size, European, the pass should be around like around one centimeter wide, which is which is a little bit less than half an inch. So I will I would like to draw something outside my libraries. So I will start, for example, on the page. So, and I so it has to be like eight lines and that will create seven paths, seven circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I left a little bit of space outside and is it one, one, two, three, four, six seven so that will be the center i have to measure because i look a little bit at an angle to make sure that everything is correct so if anybody has a 
compass. That's very easy. You can just open it and draw your circles. Oops, sorry. Needle, and that's you can create a circle. Just round like this. But for those who don't uh, have that, it's not a problem. I, I can use paper, you can use a string, but I use paper to show how we can draw that. It's not a problem if you can do, would like to do it by hand, just optically, it's not a problem at all. Uh, how wide, every path is about one, uh, I measured one centimeter to fit in it. There's just, if you measure, maybe half an inch yeah you can measure half an inch and that that's your central area will be a little bit narrower the center point okay so so i'll just you can see i got a paper that will serve as my measuring tool and again i will measure Make sure that I measure it exactly on the paper. So this is the center. This is the first one. So this is my measurement on the paper. That will serve as my tool. For, you know that. Then I will take my pen and I will make holes here for the pencil. Let them like this. So, and I, I position this one. I hold this stronger in the center with a pen. And I will use a marker, or you can use you can use a pencil. To draw circles. Uh, please use a pencil. I have to use a It's a little bit off, but it's not a problem. And the last one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the last one. Seven. So if we, you have this with figure, now we'll start drawing the labyrinth. So the first one, this is the center, but this is not, uh, even if it extends, so some of the lines will be construction line. And I will use, I have to use uh, a white off to, remove the lines. Okay, so this one, this is the, the center line, but it's not an entrance. So the entrance will be here. Uh, oh, the entrance to the center and the entrance to the labyrinth on this side. So this path, this line is the center line of the entrance. So I will suggest marking. So if this is the path circuit, about half, half of these weeds. And now we'll start drawing and I will use, you can use a ruler or you can use by hand.
two circuits, two miss, and two circuits again. Oops, I made a mistake. As I was uh, looked up and I this one. So from the starting from the center, two, two circuits will miss and two again. And this one is entrance. Okay, so on the other side, this will be the separate line. So if you look at it, here's how I was practicing this line. This one in my practice, I was thinking shit yesterday. So we did this one, two, and this one, the strong line, like a separate line that separates the two. And that will be a little bit off center, half. You can use the ruler or you can use And that will be the wall. So it separates the two. And also, the, and this will be the entrance. Here's the entrance. And it's about, we'll draw it as wide as, as this one, this one, that circuit. So if it's one centimeter, it was approximately one centimeter. And again, two across two path, two empty. And two again. And here I can suggest we can start the grounding every in this intersection to show that the corner that to show the turns. and this will be the wall. So if you, it's time we can erase certain construction lines. Is it the line? And also on this side. So the next one, now we'll, it's time to start building the side. On the ele like 11 circuit labyrinth, it's very, it's a nice and symmetrical. This one is not as symmetrical, but still it has some significance that it's seven, it's because seven. Also in this way, it, the figure as it is now, it represents a classical seven circuit labyrinth that we, that it's called as a Cretan. This is that way of drawing the shorter type of labyrinth, but they're also Cretan. And now we will continue, as you can see, here's if we rotate this drawing, here's the entrance. 
and we will start building those fossil segments. Why I also wanted to draw a specific chartered cathedral uh, labyrinth is because it separates the circle into four quadrants, and the four quadrants represent uh, four seasons. So it's almost like a year ahead of us. And uh, if you you may start as a neurographic, we always draw our drawings, create our drawings with our intentions. So if, if we started drawing, please think about your intention, your theme, why you're drawing it and what answer you would like to, to get from the labyrinths or what clarity in what area. So we will start now to create these four quadrants on the diameter, this part. So now be careful. Uh, so they start, the first one, nine hour, it's like we, we draw two, miss one uh, circuit and two again. And two are open here. The next one, at 12 o'clock, we raise our bar a little bit more. So it, it will be like one, two, second, again, two, one miss and two. And uh, three o'clock, we will miss two circuits, will be on the third line. One, two, three, this is two across the two circuits. Oops. I think that here's a two on the third line. Two. Okay. Two empty. Two cross, one empty, one and two to the end. So now I would like you to pay attention to the pattern. So where we have in the middle, so here's will be the turns and I put a dot. And dot here, dot here. So every every line that we is in the middle, there will be a turn. And I will erase this area to to clear the path. Now we can start uh, adding rounding. So this one, and I, now I can use the neurographic line a little bit. I move my head a little bit and create my circle. I can outline this one again, create rounding where we have intersection of more than like, one line, one, two lines or three lines. This one, it's a turn. Uh, this area is uh, we can round the corners here. And here's a turn again. And I will, I will erase these lines. And that's why precision, since we're using the neurographic line and drawing by hand, precision is not as important. Go 
course, I create rounding, rounding corners. It's opening the path. Just drawing the circles alone will probably put you in a very relaxed mood and I'm feeling like I'm becoming more and more relaxed. So we have so many circles, so it's eight and we're drawing them a few more times. Yes, entrance, entrance, so I put a dot here and I created turns and again the rounding where the lines intersect. Of course I will do when we finish when we finish the drawing I will spend some time more on it after the class to make it nice round corners to but this is only for like a preliminary drawing so do not try to make everything perfect right now because we'll probably have no time Now I finish. So even when I'm drawing the lines on the second C, I intentionally make them not perfect. I slightly move my hand to show that they are, they are near graphic lines. I will probably do a little bit more work like to make them more obviously neurographic. But it's not necessary. What we can we can do neurographic lines is when we start drawing the path, our walk. So we will be walking not with our feet and our eyes, but with our eyes watching and with our pencils. Okay, so we'll, I will take a, just a pencil and I will test my labyrinth. It's not the main walk. I'm just testing it whether I can walk in without, and I didn't make any mistakes in the labyrinth itself. So entrance. And I use my pencil and I will just I draw a very fine line, even neurographic line, to make sure that I can get to this center without any obstruction. So you can test your labyrinths now as well. Oh, I am I'm moving and I'm experiencing, starts experiencing something. No. C 
you can see sometimes we can get close to the to the center to the goal and it, far away and it seems it's so close like in real life and it's away okay it's seemingly that it's It seems like we're getting closer, but far away, but the idea that we get close, just like in life, it seems sometimes that we're so far away. Like for example here, but in reality, I just need one, a few steps and we're in the center. So I got out in the center without any obstacles. This means that uh, I drew my labyrinth correctly and I can get in and out without any any problems so if you can draw and walk in and out please make sure that you your path your lines are correct And I would like us to to do our first walk with the, the intention. Even when I'm thinking about it, I have uh, goosebumps. <laughs> or maybe it's effect because I was... Okay. So let's prepare our... I would use one of the, just, you can use uh, maybe a, a marker or a pencil, just a different color to indicate your path, you're walking. And now we'll draw it, I'll probably, let me see what, what mood, what is it. We'll set our intentions. So my candles. And uh, we'll, it'll be like our first experience walking in the labyrinth. Let's do, concentrate and do it thoughtfully in silence and with your whether you with your intention, whether with your prayer or your question. You can start on your, your own time. Make it to ensure that you're moving slowly and thoughtfully.
And you're in the center, just reason to pay attention to if there's anything unusual you're experiencing. I spent some time in the center. And slowly return. Okay, so everybody got out of the labyrinth. No one is lost. So any any experience? So did anybody feel anything that is very uh, special? Yeah, it's not a problem. So we'll. You can spend time, and it's this your drawing that you can experience many times. If you want to draw the labyrinth and just trace with your pencil, different pencil, or just with your finger labyrinth, it's also work well. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. I'm very happy, but for me, yes, I felt like I simply was performing a some sacred ritual. I'm not very much into those sacred rituals. I'm like more I'm more like scientific mind, but I I did feel something very special when I was especially on the way to and when I went inside I felt there was a silence that I I didn't want to break. Uh -huh. That's probably like a uh, comments about feeling anxious and moved away. Yes, there is something that's probably with, we may experience in our life. It seems that we're moving away, but as this labyrinth shows that we are always moving towards the goal. It seems like we're away, and we're moving towards the goal. So now with, a, with this main figure that looks like a mandala, decoration you may I can leave it up to you uh, I'm going to show something that I would like to to do to use but for you you can decorate it the way you want it but since it's a very spe special day I would like to add some neuro art in this labyrinth mandala and because we're so close to Christmas and Christmas is associated with a uh, wreath and pine and holly, I would like to use this tradition in this drawing. So that's what we're going to, I'm going to use and you, you're welcome to use with me, of course. So Christmas wreath, meaning and symbolism. First of all, it's a circle. 
and it's we studied the circle it everything as about perfection and also idea of eternity with no beginning and end the cycle of season the hope of life renewing as the sun is coming you know, start shining brightly and those who believe of course in those christians and believe in christ we have hope of through christ as nativity feast of nativity is approaching and of course an ending love of god and an ending love of the universe of consciousness if we use the more like a scientific language so materials also may pay, uh, pay attention and they significant what we're using evergreen is always because life eternal so we use evergreen continuity and survival through difficult times so not nothing is lost and there are a few elements and I, I actually I didn't know what means everything holy represents the crown of thorns it's a Christmas and in general all this pine holy and you symbolize eternal life cedar stands for healing laurel re represents caucus of caucus over pain and suffering and pine cones seeds and not represents rebirth so that's why I have this uh, pines probably they have no seeds if they opened they were in warm temperature for a while and of course can always use our uh, friend a fur this, and I would like to use this idea around my uh, labyrinth to decorate it as a center centerpiece so first we can draw the neurogra neurographic line around so I I circle it again and circle it with the neurographic line Can draw as many you want. Uh, I think I would like to include. I'll use a finer marker. So we have so so many circles, and I feel like I need a little bit sharper, something sharper. And I will uh, draw a holly tree leaves. To add a little bit drama into this overall peaceful picture with and maybe a couple more on each side. You can include the berries, the circles. You feel a little bit too dramatic with those leaves. Oh, just lost a little bit of leaf. Kind of. Here's another one.
Maybe this one is hidden behind every kind of maybe a few berries. A cluster. It's up to you where you feel how many you'd like to include. With respect to rounding, this drawing has no conflict. Typically, we do more rounding when it's a conflict, some issues difficult. We do more rounding. That every intersection, in this case, around as many as intersections as you feel comfortable. If you need, if you feel discomfort, do more rounding. If you feel like you, you're okay with these sharp corners, leave them sharp. Just will, this will add a little bit of contrast and balance to the overall round figure. So, and I would like also to include a little bit of maybe other uh, greens, like pine. If we thought about holy, and pine represents eternal life. So, just for decoration, I will include this uh, simple. You can even use coloring pencils or marker, green marker, to draw them. I will use them for now for a black one. And it's something like a pine, it's something very simple. Again, more sharp line. So these spikes, these sharp lines also represents that those sharp elements in the, that we saw in triangles that I showed you. So that will add more sharpness, more contrast to this overall peaceful drawing. And again, it's up to you if you feel like a little bit stressed about having so many spikes, be careful with it. So if you feel too many of them, just add a, a few more berries. You can also include anything in a neuro drawing. It's not a neurographica. You can you may include stars if you want, if you feel like. Uh, decorate, like make it a nice, nice festive looking drawing. I would like to um, Finish because we're just almost close to the time, our time. Our colors. I would like to first to apply colors that like, probably needs to be a little bit darker green. More darker green. Uh, 
I'll bring a couple more uh, green, different shades of green. And colors also have a meaning. So green is to, to symbolize youth and growth. Uh, these are watercolor pencils, so if you... color this drawing all together because it will take time so we can work with various colors and berries So we will also, and after the class, we'll finish our time to, together. I will add more neurographic lines to my evergreens. And rounding, feeling how, what I would like to add. various colors, green and blue. So it's uh, up to you the year. I'm leaving you with your own artistic taste and style so you can draw you know, what you feel like. Uh, the only to make to maintain this that it's drawing is neurographic drawing. Please remember the line, the neurographic line, and that's the uh, elements are connected and rounding. So in any time you would like to walk your labyrinth again and you have a question and you have ideas, you can try this um, and you can use it with a different different color. As example, of We'll use the blue one. Uh, and eventually, I will finish the walk uh, later. And eventually, you may have uh, all these multiple colors filled with this space within as well. Yes. So I wish everyone happy drawing and happy holidays. I will con continue and hope we'll meet in the new year again and again with a free drawing or classes. So if you have any questions regarding classes or courses or this drawing, please find me on Facebook or email. Happy holidays for now. And Merry Christmas, you celebrate for any other holiday that you're celebrating. Bye for now.